Hi everyone! This month I want to talk about how to make the leap from art as a hobby to art as a business. So how to become a professional artist and some of the things you might encounter on that journey. And the journey looks very different for all of us as artists, but hopefully some of these tips will help you in your own. Enjoy the video! I really racked my brains trying to think of a way I could give you a quick rundown of something that is quite a complex topic. Uh, my solution is two pastel pie charts and the thing that seemed to tie everything together that I'm going to talk about was time management and this pie chart will show you how I spent my time in the beginning and then we'll compare it a little to how I spend my time now. So the first thing you'll notice is I have a lovely big block of blue on the first pie chart and I devoted most of that time to painting and practicing my own art. Uh, now this would also include uh, watching art documentaries, visiting galleries and museums, looking at a lot of other artists' work, trying to incorporate some of that into my own work and find a style that I could call my own. And once I started to find a style, then I could build my portfolio, which would later help me get some work. So the first most important thing really is to work on yourself, on your own style and your art and raise the quality of that before even thinking of marketing yourself. And once you start building up a collection of work that you think showcases your strongest style, then you're starting to form a portfolio. And you really want your portfolio to have a consistency, uh, your highest standard. So if you've done a pet portrait that was from really poor quality photo reference and it's maybe not your best work even though you did a great job for the client. It's maybe not one to put in your portfolio as you want new people to see your best work. And now once you have a portfolio built up that leads me on to marketing yourself and one of the main areas that I used in the beginning was social media. So Facebook, um, Instagram these days, I was out before Instagram was. But all of those free platforms can really help you get your work out there, get people seeing it. And also it helps you network with other artists, hear about exhibitions, get involved in art groups. So it's just a brilliant tool to use the whole way through your art career. And now you'll notice that I devoted a significant section of my time to this in the beginning especially because no one knew my work and I was really pushing and trying to get my name out there so a significant amount of your time does need to go into promoting yourself as well as spending time working on your own style. So the next thing that will take a bit of your time is inquiries um, and these might come from other artists looking information or hopefully from prospective clients. And these are always something that take a little bit of time to maybe crop their photos, give them some different size options and pricing. So it takes time to provide a quotation. And you need to consider that when you're pricing your work, that it's not just the time that you spend painting, but you will have a lot of time uh, spent doing correspondence, giving quotations. So it's a lot more than just your hands-on painting time that you're quoting for. And you'll notice that the time that I devoted to this was very little in the beginning because I had no inquiries. No one was really wanting my work at the very beginning until you get the ball rolling. So don't get disheartened if the amount of time that you need to devote to inquiries is very small at the start. Hopefully, if you keep going and you do all the things right, you will get a lot more inquiries coming into your inbox. Another task that you have to encounter in any business is, of course, admin. So this includes bookkeeping, ordering new supplies, all that kind of stuff, usually behind the computer stuff. So again, in the beginning, a very small slither of my time because I wasn't generating much income or needing much in the way of admin work. Another area that I spent a lot of my time on was galleries and exhibitions. So you pretty much want to do everything you can to get your name out there and in the beginning, on your own, that's very difficult. So with the help of a gallery behind you, especially maybe one with a good reputation, it can really help build your profile a little. Uh, but do be aware that you're going to expect to pay them uh, anything around 30 to 50% of your sale price. 
Uh, that's something you need to take into account when you're pricing your work. Also, when you approach a gallery, do your research, look at the style of work that they already have in the gallery, the type of artist that they promote, and, and really see if you would fit in, in their surroundings. Um, so really do your research as an artist before uh, going into a gallery. And also don't be disheartened if you come out of a gallery with a big no. I heard so many no's in the beginning and you just, I suppose, need to have a bit of a thick skin and not always take it too personally. Uh, sometimes it can be for a completely different reason that they won't choose your work. So you've got to approach lots of galleries, speak to gallery owners. They know a lot about the art business that you're trying to get into, really make use of their knowledge. Another thing I did um, as an artist starting out was had a market stall um, and even before the days when I had lots of original paintings from which I could create merchandise I would get a market stall with the few examples that I had of families and friends, pets and people and get little frames on them, whatever I could get to make them presentable and go and sit on a market stall even though I had nothing to sell and I would sit working on a painting while I was there and this was a great way to get started, meet people, have them come over with real interest in your work. So even before you've got merchandise to sell, you can use the platform of a market stall to promote yourself. But then in later years as I got more paintings in my portfolio, um, I created prints, postcards, you can create all sorts of merchandise and it's another good uh, revenue for any professional artist. In my early years as an artist, I also devoted a bit of time to illustration work. It's actually what my degree is in. I studied illustration, but I very quickly realized that all of these other areas were uh, pulling me more. So uh, I think even sometimes when you graduate as something, you later on realize that it's not what you thought it was or it's not really what you wanted to do. And luckily in the art world, it's very flexible, so you can move around and get into other areas even when you perhaps don't have a qualification for that. So it's a great area to work in where you can change your career to really suit yourself. And lastly, in the beginning, one of the other things I did pretty soon was to start doing demos. So at home in Northern Ireland, we have quite a lot of local art groups and they often get different artists in each week to do a demo. So I very quickly started doing that as soon as I became comfortable painting in front of people and again that was a great way to network and just become really comfortable in front of the easel with a group of people and that has served me really well ever since. Um, and they also bring in a little bit of revenue, you often get paid as the artist to come and do a demo so another good source of revenue as an artist. So this is pretty much how my time looked at the beginning, the things I was trying to do to get this to take off. Um, and I'm going to quickly show you how my time looks now. And you can see that there are a lot more slices on this pie and unfortunately they all have to fit into the same amount of time that exists. So the first thing you'll notice is I have a lot less time for painting. These days my inquiries from prospective clients and then corresponding with those clients throughout the progress of their portrait this takes up a significant amount of my time now because I'm busier than I was before, so obviously I have to devote more time to this. So as social media and all my marketing techniques started to work, I started to become more busy and I started to get other messages from all sorts of places. So right now I'm getting messages from people on YouTube, uh, from my patrons through Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, there's a long list of places where people can message me and get in touch and I have to devote some of my time to answering those questions. And this leads me on to the time that I still spend on social media. So this is coming up with my posts, uh, taking the progress pictures, uploading them, editing them, uh, also posting my work onto other art pages, so like pastel groups on Facebook, things like that. All of this takes more time. Like before, I've still got a slice devoted to admin and I don't think anyone likes these jobs. I certainly don't, but yes, you do have to devote some of your time to admin. So a brand new segment on my pie from the early days is video making. And this is something that I've put a lot of my time, especially this past year, into making videos. When I first started off, I think I 
focused heavily on galleries and exhibitions, things which were local to me. Um, and then my needs changed where I, I needed my work to be able to travel with me, to not be tied to one specific place. So the online world seemed like a natural step for me. Maybe not for everyone, but it's certainly another good avenue uh, to explore for some revenue as a professional artist. So the next slice is devoted to Patreon and YouTube. And like with video making, there are other tasks that come along with uh, putting yourself out on these platforms. So I've got constant messages to get back to, um, even just setting up a page like that, where you've got to design your banner and all the work that goes into setting one of these channels up. So there's a lot of work in promoting yourself in an online way too. Something else I do a little of these days is workshops and I don't do very many of them, maybe one or two per year as there's so much work involved in them and they're obviously going to eat into some of my other time so I try to keep this to a minimum. Another thing I need to manage is my website and my web shop. So at the moment I don't do a market stall but I still do a little bit of merchandise and I use my website to sell it on. So there is always upkeep in your website and if you have a shop on there you have a little bit of work to do with that as well. Also on my website I have a blog and in the past I put a lot of effort into uploading the progress of each painting so the client could go there and see the full progression. These days I focus a little more of my attention on the video making but I do still contribute a lot to my blog as well so I spend a lot of time writing and editing photos for that. I also write the odd article for art magazines, so this takes up a little bit of my time. And even though I've been on the move for the past couple of years, I've still devoted a bit of my time to the galleries who I deal with at home in Northern Ireland, so uh, I still like to keep a little foot in that door as eventually that's an area that I would like to expand again. Um, so you can see that it's an ever-changing thing. It's very hard to tell you how to become a professional artist in one sentence. And everyone will do it in such a different way. I have a lot of artist friends who have gone a completely different direction from me and are finding uh, an income from their art. So just another couple of things that I wanted to mention as I think they're really important. Um, dealing with clients. Uh, I always try to be really straightforward and professional with clients. I like to do all my correspondence uh, via email usually because it means that everything is written down. We can both refer back to the details that we agreed upon. In the beginning, you might want to uh, start using a contract with your clients. This is something that I actually haven't done uh, apart from with my illustration work. I find that with uh, the one-to-one -one relationship between me and the client, this hasn't been a problem. But I do like to have everything written down and recorded in our emails. Another bit of advice for dealing with your commission clients is to always collect a deposit. So make sure that you have a down payment before ever starting to do any work. And also obviously make sure that you get your full payment before ever posting the finished piece of work to them. But really just be prompt with clients um, and professional and clear about your terms and conditions from the beginning. Another thing to consider is your pricing. Um, and so often I see artists underprice themselves as opposed to overprice. So don't be scared in the beginning even to set your prices, um, having taken into consideration all the hours that you put into the artwork, the cost of your materials. And then later on when you're really looking at this like a business, you need to take into consideration the overall time that you spend on your art business and what you really need to earn from that for it to be worthwhile. And it's, it's wonderful to do something that you love doing, but at the same time, you have to pay your bills and we need to eat as artists too. So make sure that your prices are appropriate to the standard of your work. And my last bit of advice to you really is to grab opportunities. Um, random things come to you as an artist. It's not a career path that you can predict or know where it's going to take you. And that's a wonderful thing about it. But I find that sometimes just by being the artist who replied quickly or met the big deadline when it was most needed, that you put yourself out there as someone who is reliable and can be counted on to produce good work even under high stress. So just really work on your reputation as someone who can be trusted and relied on to produce the top work.
Something to bear in mind if you're enjoying painting as an amateur right now, um, and it's whether you want to take your art to the next step and turn professional, which in itself adds a lot of extra pressures on you if it becomes your only source of income. And you may even find that you have so much less time doing the one thing that you really loved doing in the first place. So it's a complicated journey, um, it's not straightforward. Um, the highs are really high and the lows can be quite low. But having said all that, I would not swap my pie for any other job in the world. So thanks for watching. Um, because this is such a huge topic, I think I'll come back and do some longer videos on some of these individual ideas. But I hope you find this helpful. If you haven't already, please do hit subscribe here on YouTube. Or check out my Patreon channel also for longer tutorial videos and lots more. Thanks for watching.